these are assi uh, already assigned to a cloud project. OK, and that's the reason if you are also trying to check for that particular uh, package on your system, you would also be able to see that particular development object which I am creating, provided you are also on the same provider, same region account over here. OK, and uh, another question is, uh, can we use uh, VS also Visual Studio for this development? Because uh, I think we are using Eclipse uh, as a GUI. So for VS code, uh, I guess for the, uh, I can say BT, RAP relevant development, no, you won't be. For the CAP relevant development, you can uh, CAP uh, for Fury and for UFR, definitely you can go with a VS code because it has all the relevant plugins that you need. For VS Code, uh, I guess for RAP, as per what I know, VS Code has not a relevant plugins available till now because it does not understand the concept of a transport. So ABAP ideally works on a strict locking mode. Okay, ABAP works on a on a locking mechanism, which is supported in the, with the help of certain transport mechanism, and which is something which is not till date supported by VS Code and BS. And that's the reason that you won't be able to use this for this development. Yeah, you can for RAP. No, you cannot. OK, and one more question that is that uh, as there are lots of changes in uh, coming in cloud. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, as we are developing a BAS uh, using on cloud compiler uh, UIFI, all coding is done. So like same, can we do the ABAP development on cloud like uh, is the compile online compiler is available? So these are online compiler only who is doing the trick over here. So if you see, we just connected to it and how we authenticated is via the um, I can say cloud URL. OK, so it just a particular um, there are two kind of tools, OK, two kinds of plugins which are working parallelly in order for you to provide the development experience. OK, so for example, the first environment who is doing the trick over here is the BTP and there if you see over here. You are getting authenticated on the cloud, so this is the URL onto which you are connected and these are API using which all the cloud relevant activities are being authenticated are validated and everything. OK, this is one thing. Another thing is the tools dot dot on demand. Those are the plugin which are compatible and which are doing the I can say all the development compilation and interpretation activity or for on premise as well as on cloud. So if you see the ADT tool that we installed tools dot Hana dot on demand slash latest, right? So those particular ADT tools are cloud enabled. So you would feel as if you are doing the development on on premise, but the moment you start activating registering those service, those service will start appearing on cloud. And during that as well, whatever development that you are going to do is ultimately validated by the cloud environment by using this two plugin. One, the cloud API URL, which is on BTP, another tools.hana.ondemand. So these are the two things. And you are not going to do the any development on the on-premise in this particular BTP trial account. It feels because you are working offline, but the moment you disconnect, okay, for example, currently we are on Teams, but the moment you disconnect, you won't be able to use it. Earlier, you are on on-premise. So for example, if you are on office, if you are connected to your intranet, even though you are not connected to your internet, you would be able to work because you are on the same server premise. But over here, you would not be able to do the development because you would need the internet. You won't be able to only work using intranet. Okay. 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 That's a, that's a difference. Yeah. So I'll just finish it and I guess a project should get created over here. And I can see, I guess one. Okay, I guess hi, Pauna. I guess if I can see you. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I'll just start opening this. And here, as you can see, we do have a very nice uh, project repository getting created. Now, whatever object that you are able to see over here in the release one are the release project. So these are the one which are anyway develop so this is something that we did not develop right these are the one which were developed already centrally okay we did not do any of this development instead it was developed by your um shared environment okay so someone would have developed this and that's how you are able to see it over here that's how it is called a shared environment 
So now if you see currently we don't have any package that package or object that we might have locked into the favorite one, but there are Z local and someone would have created this particular objects and that's how they are also available. So these are the first and foremost thing. We just set up the BTP trial account and this is the one that we are going to use. Now the next step, or I can say what we are now going to focus. I hope we all are clear and we are on the same page till now. The account setup and how the development would start reflecting. So once we do the development, we'll see okay how it start reflecting all the stuff. So I guess maybe it will be in the following session. But currently we are starting the development by understanding two of the main thing. I can say CDS basics and I can say REST API architecture because RAP cannot be um, understood uh, or I can say worked upon if these two pillars are not clear. OK, so this is something that I will be focusing on because this is how I have actually scheduled this session. My first and foremost thing is the basics should be clear and then I guess uh, rest everything will be just piece of cake going forward. OK, so this is something that we are going to focus now. I guess just uh, I guess quick minute in case anyone is having any question, feel free to ask. Uh, just one question like uh, out of the way and if we now we have set up a BTP account. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, we can uh, program in Eclipse, but mm -hmm. how are we going to consume that program? So if I have written a program mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I cannot uh, con connect uh, the BTP account to SAP GUI, right? Yeah, but I SAP GUI is not going to be the way forward. So to answer your question, whatever services that you are going to develop, OK, going forward, uh, SAP GUI used to be the way earlier. Now each and everything uh -huh. are going to be there in your output by using multiple HTML5 application services, be it Launchpad service, be it work zone, be it portal service and multiple ways. So these are the one SAP cloud portal service, uh -huh. your success factor, the build work zone and everything. So these are the ways with the help of which you will be able to connect your service. So for example, okay. if I say cloud portal service, you would be subscribing for the application that you are going to develop. For example, a Fury application because it's a HTML5 application. You are creating a, a business application studio workspace. You are creating an uh, application over there. The service that you can consume over uh, there is the service that we are going to create in my web environment. I'm going to deploy it and that particular mm -hmm. service will be using uh, will be um, I guess working as a backend service. So I can say your BAS for UI development. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, I can say um, ABAP environment. For your backend development, so ultimately what this system will do is this will ultimately give you an O data service. This will ultimately give you a um, service endpoint. And this service endpoint will be consumed by your UI application over here. And finally, what you are going to do is First and foremost thing, you might have already deployed this service by if you see in last session or I can say in webinar, we already created a service definition service binding. So this particular binding that we created uh, is ultimately going to create a service. That service is going to be consumed by UI development and this UI application is something that we are going to deploy. The moment you deploy it, it will create a Fury application and that particular Fury application we would be binding on my portal. So your end user from your end user's perspective, what all thing he'll have your end user is not required to install your Eclipse. He is not required to install BS. All he is required to know is the URL for your launch pad. Or I can say a portal cloud portal. You can uh, okay. you you might also have seen a launch pad, right? So on the launch pad, a tile will get created and a tile will be nothing but your UI application, which will internally connect to this. So at end of okay. the day for your end user, the only thing that will going that is going to change is from your SAP GUI, he'll move to the SAP Fury. That's all. In okay. backend, okay. whatever we'll technology. Back for, yeah, definitely. He is we'll not worried about any code. code. You have, you related code, I mean. To so this, uh, so I'll, I, so first our initial focus, our initial focus will be to uh, ultimately understand the uh, wrap all its architecture. We would be generating and uh, working with the application in a preview mode. So this will be our initial focus somewhere towards the end of the session. I guess uh, towards the end, I'll help you connect the end to end over here. 
where we would be creating a simplest application by consuming the OData service that we created. And there you would be able to see our first application getting deployed and available on the launchpad. So that's that will be somewhere towards the end. But yeah, to answer your question, yes, we'll be doing it. So uh, what you're saying is that going forward, most of the ABAP development would be uh, targeted towards an OData service. We have to Definitely. do the backend development and there will be an OData service and then uh, the UI people will look at the OData service and do whatever they want to do. Yeah, in a way, yes. Another thing will be using the wrap based development. If you mm -hmm. see, you are ultimately getting converted to a full stack. In a way, if you see, because if you see, uh, I mm -hmm. I think you guys remember, I guess most of you were there while we did this particular development. I'll just like, open this. It would ultimately allow me okay. to just log in once. Okay. okay, so we already connect created a normal travel service, right? So what you might have seen is that I do have a UR, uh, UI service which is available and I was able to do the preview. Though I did not write any short of a uh, UI code, but your UI preview was available. But if you just go over here, if you just do the application preview. Okay, so uh, I guess if I remember, I have seen all of most of your name while you were on the, I can say webinar, but just to Actually, be on the same like right towards the end of that. Uh, no, no issues, no issues. I'll just ultimately there are only two objects just to make it simple. I had kept only a couple of objects over there. OK, so if you see we uh, consumed a table called uh, travel table. OK, we created a root view entity and this was my interface view. Purpose was for a reusable aspect post which we created a consumption view. This is going to be going to be my front face using which my OData service gets created and it will always be a projection view. So if you see over here, here you would see that as select from, but on the last view, which is a C view consumption view, you will never see as select. You will always see as projection because it's a projection view. And here for us to get the transactional behavior, you have to specify provider contract transactional query. This is something that we will be using further. But if you don't write this, you would get a warning. You won't get an error, but we are trying to work in a way that we are not having any warning as much as possible. So that's where we created as uh, this projection view. And this projection view is something that we expose. We never expose the I view or the table. So if you see the service definition that we created, we expose the C view that we created over here and we are able to see the travel. Now of over here, we uh, consume this service definition that we created, created a service binding over here. And as you can see, this service URL will ultimately show me the metadata. So if I just go over here, metadata over here, you will see that, okay, I do have a entity called travel type, which is having a primary key called travel ID. How it is uh, defining that? Because we specified this travel ID as a key over here. And the rest of the property, whatever we specified, we are able to see the OData service over here. As we created the service binding within OData 2.0, we are able to see the uh, entity over here with the same name. OK, now uh, what we did is we never ask any UI developer to do anything over here, right? We are able to see a plain application. But if you see, if I just go over here and I say that I want to create some sort of a column over here, from the backend side, you would be developing a, um, I can say, set of columns and everything you need. So, for example, you would say UI dot line item. So, we'll be seeing all these annotations, uh, what all things are required. So, if you see, this is a CDS view. So, for most of you, or let's just say for uh, the one who have not worked on CDS that extensively, SAP is uh, giving a set of libraries in CDS uh, in the term of annotations. So these for access control authorization, these for end user, same way for UI designing, there are annotation which are coming with a namespace. So anything starts with at the rate is annotation. You are saying UI and I want to create a column. There comes the annotation called line item. You will say position and you would be defining that this should be available on my first one. Then why did I specify 10? Because it this does not it does not specify the position, as in like at what position it will be. Should it be at the tenth position? No. When I say ten, and when I say uh, for example twenty over here, okay, it means 
that this particular position is greater than this. It means if I do have 10, 20, but here I do have, for example, 5. Then it will short it ascending and it would say it would say that customer ID should be available first, then the travel ID and then the agency ID. So this is just sequencing based on the ascending order in order for us to give the option tomorrow. For example, I have write a uh, thousand, 10 to thousand UI line item and I want to add one more column internally. OK, then will I have a option to add a column in between or do I have to do a rearrangement? So if you would have write one, two, three, then you would be stuck. I cannot add any column in between, but here I do have option of adding 10 columns in between. That's why SAP always says give the numbers in form of a uh, it multiple of 10. So here I just wrote it like this. And here if you see, I'll just add only this column. For example, these are the column which I am not showing by default. The moment I activate this, I don't have any UI developer or any UI project created separately. But as I wrote UI annotation over here, if I just go back and I just start refreshing this, As you can see, system just generated those five columns for me. Even without me asking the system to do that, system is allowing me to um, ultimately create those columns. If I just go one more uh, level up, okay. If I just say that I want to have a couple of more fields, so for example, I want to give some sort of uh, uh, filters, I'll just say selection field, position 10. position 20 just two okay and it will create the filters as well now how how it will be advantageous so it means you are doing the ui designing on your side definitely i cannot hand over this url to my end user but while you're if you see i just started getting two filters as well the moment i say activate sorry i the moment i say go i am getting this now if i just say that i want to get uh, the record which are on a particular date i can filter that as well and it will work so for example, if I just say it's equal to 5th of November only, for example. No, oh, this 5th of Jan. That's why the system uh, did not uh, allow me. I'll just say 5th November. What was the date? Fifth November 2022 it was. Okay. OK, so I just got all the record which are only for the 5th of November. And here if I say no, I want to also get the end date which are on 3rd of September 2023. OK, here I only get the record which are relevant. Now how the system is doing this? Because even without you knowing it, you are doing certain stuff for example, you just implemented a, a filter operations like in SAGW gateway service. You have to write that explicitly. But here if you see, I'll just say. Inspect OK, and the moment you. This is my element. This is my console sources network OK, over here. Now here, if I just go over here, I guess it is just some short of a screen service. If I just say go over here, if you see a batch call got created and it is ultimately triggering the filter calls and everything. OK, I'll just go here and say. Oh, I just opened one, so I just trigger a query call. Uh, I'll just trigger a read call. I'll just go back. I was willing to click on this go. Yeah, here it is. So if you see the travel and it just say skip top dollar filter, this equal to start date is this end date is this and give me the set of data by dollar select and everything. Earlier in gateway, you were writing single single line of code for that first. Second, 
here the moment you are doing this your system uh, creates those columns by default so now going forward while you are and uh, while you are ui developer is asking you like i want to create a ui application please provide me the o data endpoint you will provide him this so this is going to be your endpoint which is connected to your this particular service okay and the moment you provide this even without him writing any code to display the column just because of the metadata extension thus just because of the ui annotation you provided over here the moment very first time they uh, create the project these columns and filters will start appearing by default okay so now if you just connect the dots that for a ui developer if he is working, yeah, I guess this is also one of the thing. If he is working on the Fury elements based applications, if your user's requirement is creating columns, filters, and there are plenty more things, okay, this those can be achieved by using Fury annotations, and that's something we will also be learning. Then your UI developer is not required to write e anything specifically. All he is going to do is he is just going to consume your uh, service and going to create a project, and that's all and your UI project will be up and running. Now, this is something that you are doing from backend. You enrich it with a UI annotation. Now, what is the thing which is remaining in order for you to convert to a UI developer as well? Nothing, I guess it's just a business application studio or web SAP web ID full stack. You should be knowing how you can create the project and you can take your first step in the UI development world. Okay, so ultimately you can be a full stack developer going forward the moment you are into SAP RAP because this is just a read only application I'm talking about going forward, enabling, disabling field, putting the validation, assigning it to a relevant field. Everything and anything can be handled by the backend. On the UI set, does this just the minimum setup and some sort of JavaScript if you are willing to also go in that direction, but that's something that won't be our focus over here, but you can take your first step toward the UI development. That's where rep is actually the new glory, I guess, going forward. Okay. Okay. Uh, I cannot hear you clearly. Uh, you, where did you get that URL form? You created the CDS view. And, I create, uh, so uh, just to go one more step back, there is a, uh, CDS view, which is an I view I created. And even to go one more mm -hmm. step back, I'll just say. Uh, that's all we, I guess that's all where everything just started, right? right. So this is where everything just started from. So if you just see that we had a database, we created a CDS view on top of it. We created a projection view. So these are read only application we started working on. Then we defined the scope of uh, our application. It's not, uh, not visible. Yeah. Is it? PPT, is it? PPT is not. Loaded. It is. It is. To me, it is visible. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I, it's loaded. No. Okay. Yeah. So maybe there would be some lag from your end, but yeah, I guess. And uh, now you are able to see the screen, right? Okay. Yes. So. So this is a database table. You created a view which uh, by choosing the field that you want, you want to expose to the world outside. You created a projection view and then you define the scope of your application by defining the service definition. The moment you did that, you define that your view that you created, you want to expose it. And then you created a service binding on top of it by defining that you want to do a OData v2. So the first block I'm talking about over here is a table which was already there. If you want, you can create your own table as well. And we'll be creating our own table post which you created the CDS view data model post which you created your projection view here. If you see project the element and enrich. Now we created the element projected the element and today we enriched it by saying that these my line item, these my selection field and multiple things This is enrichment and post okay. which we expose the service definition so here we define that for my travel application, what is the scope of my application? So I say my travel application will only be dealing with the data which are relevant to the travel view. So here I defined the scope. If I want, I can also expose multiple views. So that would be a scope going forward of our application. So you are defining the scope. 
post which I consume this ZUI underscore travel underscore SRV into my OData service. I defined that I want a OData V2 service to be generated for my UI application development. And that's where I generated service binding. And this service binding, the moment you click on this service URL, you will get the end point of your OData service metadata. And post which if you want to just uh, have a glimpse of how your output would be looking like, you would be doing the preview over here. Okay. Okay, so this is how the whole circle works. Okay, and that's how the only connected dot that you would be, um, I guess, uh, interested in doing is you can take your first step to the UI development. Just a suggestion, I guess uh, it's not hard and fast. We would be working on the wrap dedicatedly. But yeah, these why most of the person, uh, most of the people who started working on BTP, most of the people who started working on cloud also start taking the path of a full stack development because that's just one step ahead, right? Sorry. Right. Okay, so yeah, Meghna. Uh, so uh, here you are using word list uh template. I am okay. using list report, SAP list, list report. report. So master detail application is also possible. Uh, so master detail application you can develop and all those application, I guess, support annotations as well, but you can only preview list report from uh, Eclipse. Preview is not possible. Preview is only possible for list report on object page uh, as per edit is functionality. But yeah, the backend annotation that we write over here will also enrich your work list application also. So it's not only relevant to list report, but yeah, preview functionality is currently only limited to this. Okay. okay. So we can uh, preview it using URL directly. Yeah, definitely you can. And uh, analytic application is also. Available. Yeah, ALP, no? analytical list page with the visual filters and yeah. all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's also possible because it's also a, um, I can say, um, annotation based application right you would be defining your presentation variant selection presentation variant and all those stuff and all those stuff can be developed on the cds so now cds annotation library is enriched to do all the stuff possible okay okay so i guess uh, it was uh, i guess a uh, good fruitful session and that's where i was actually heading to so i feel uh, we would um, have this particular session limited to this only. 